In this tutorial then, we're going to look at how to use Venn diagrams for conditional events, when we have conditional probability. So uh, first of all, let's have a look at a Venn diagram. So the standard idea is to draw two circles which uh, very often overlap. And when they overlap, we get this central region here, which implies both A, so let's label it A, and B. Okay, so what we're going to do is use the idea of a Venn diagram or the Venn diagram method uh, to solve a conditional probability. And what we need to do is just summarize what we've got here then in the Venn diagram. First of all, the outside or the total area, if you like, the rectangle the filled in rectangle that represents everything is known as the universal set. So we sometimes call this xi or omega using Greek letters. I prefer to use i, some people use u, uh, but it doesn't matter what we call it. Uh, this is the universal set that comprises everything. And in the case of uh, Venn diagrams for conditional uh, probability, what we're going to have here is all possible outcomes. Okay, so the universal set represents all possible outcomes of whatever probability situation we're asked to investigate. Okay, so what does A represent? Well, A must represent, and we use curly brackets like this, A must re represent the set of um, all outcomes that are favorable and I've got successful favorable in the first event let's just call it one like that and B has got to be all the outcomes that are favorable in the second event so if we're drawing from a collection of things or a population of people, for example, then this would be the second draw. All right, uh, now what, what a good idea is to compare this to uh, our tree diagram method that we've looked at before. So if I draw those out like this, you remember that in the tree di diagram, what we've got is in the first event, so if we just do some dotted line down here to separate the first and second event. So the first event is to the left of the dotted line. The second event is to the right. So um, here we've got the probability of A, okay, which is getting a favorable outcome, getting what we want. okay. And here must be the complement of that, not getting what we want. In other words, not A. Okay. In the second event, because it's conditional probability, we have the probability of B given, so we use this vertical line here, that we got a favorable outcome in the first event. So this one must be the probability of not getting B given A. And down here, we've got the probability of not getting A, so we must have the probability of B given that we didn't get what we wanted. And here, the probability of not uh, getting a favorable outcome in the second event, given that we didn't get one in the first event either, like that. So these, in other words, are our conditional probabilities. Now, this is all a bit abstract until we think of an example. Let's choose the example of, um, sometimes it's a bag. I'm going to just draw very quickly a cookie jar. Is that a reasonable drawing of a cookie jar? Let's have another go. I think it's a bit wobbly. It wouldn't stand up. Let's have another go. Okay. So if I draw it over here a little better anyway. So if I go down, like there we go. That's a bit better. So now I've got a flat bottomed, let's draw this like this, 
Okay, flat bottom cookie jar, and I suppose I might as well draw the lid as well. So let's have a lid going over there and a little handle on the top. So there's my cookie jar. And inside my cookie jar, what I'm going to do is draw some cookies, biscuits, we say in the United Kingdom. Okay, so let's have, yeah, let's have some chocolate. Let's have three chocolate cookies. Okay. Very nice. And let's have some strawberry. Uh, how many strawberries do we want? Does that look like a strawberry cookie, strawberry flavour? Two. Let's have four strawberries. And over here. Okay. So, seven cookies in all, and we've got three chocolate and four strawberry. Now, what do we want? Uh, I guess in this example, I think most people would say, well, what, what would you like to pick out of a cookie jar? Let's say most people want chocolate. So we'll just write, we want chocolate. So we'll be very pleased if we pull out a chocolate flavoured cookie. And if we pulled out another one, would be even more pleased so we, it might be that we get two so let's look at the probability that we will actually get two chocolate cookies if we don't look if we randomly draw from our cookie jar here if we just dip our hand in and don't uh, and, and and don't know what we what it is we're going to pull out okay so to fill in the Venn diagram, what we have to do is consider the sample space. And in previous videos, we've looked at ways of doing that. The most versatile way of doing it is simply by drawing a kind of tree diagram, but uh, this time tracing all possible outcomes, not just uh, are favourable and are not favourable. So all possible outcomes must start with seven arms, because there are seven cookies. So if I draw it something like this. How many have we got now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we are, not very even. Let's maybe just spread that one out a little bit. Okay. Uh, that should just about do it. Okay. So now, whoops, I don't know why I'm so wobbly today. Let's have another go. Okay. Let's just erase that and get this right. So let's go outwards. There we go. All right. So now what we've got at each, at the end of each of these seven branches has got to be six options. Because with conditional probability, especially when we're dipping in and taking one thing, um, then the uh, in the second event we've only we've got one less basically, that we can take from. So we had seven in the first round. Now we've only got six. So I'm going to draw that like this. There we go. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's have another go. So here, let's do all our forks first, I think. That'll be the easiest, like this. And then subdivide. Look at these. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so I'm going all the way around. Like this. And now we can fill in the choices. So first of all, these, well, these are the possibilities. Uh, first of all, we have how many chocolates? Three chocolates. So there we go. Those are uh, three chocolates. And let's fill in our, perhaps I should use a different kind of pen for that. Let's fill in our, yeah, let's use a, a dark red pen. So fill in our strawberries like this. So four strawberry possibilities in the first round. Now, if we keep to the strawberries, if I drew a strawberry here, then I must only have three strawberries left. So I'm going to write three there, three there three here and three here uh, whereas here I've still got four strawberries left so strawberry 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 here 
Okay, and that's all the strawberries done. So going back to my chocolate, which is what I want. I've got CCC there. C. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four. I should only have two chocolates because I've already taken a chocolate in the first round. So let's get this right. Okay, there we go. So two chocolates for each of these C ones and three for each of the S ones. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that completes our sample space diagram. And what you can see is we've got seven in the first round, six in the second round. Around the outside, then we should have 42 possibilities. So that's our sample space. I, in other words, equals 42. OK, so that started to fill in our Venn diagram. But what about the numbers in the middle? One of the easiest things to fill in, very often, is when you don't have any favourable outcomes, but yet we have to fit that into all, all possible outcomes. So that's outside of these circles. So how many times do we get no favourable outcome whatsoever? Well, it can't be any of these branches here. It must be these four branches here. And it can't be when we have a C. So we've got... 4 times 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 times 3, 12. So we have 12 on the outside. This is when we've got a, we've selected a strawberry and a strawberry again, unfortunately. Okay, so that's when we don't get any favourable outcomes. What about this central region here where we do get what we want? We get chocolate and another chocolate. This must be this arm, these three arms here. And we can see we've got chocolate, 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 and chocolate, chocolate. So we've got three times two, in other words, six possibilities of getting um, chocolate both times. So this is both in event A and in event B. So um, if we wanted to uh, ask ourselves, well, um, what what is the chances of us getting just two chocolate biscuits this time? We've already answered our question. So without filling in anything else, we can say it's six out of 42 or one out of seven, one seventh. But let's continue to fill in our um, diagram and then we'll compare to how we would have done it traditionally using the multiplication rule. But 6 out of 42, that's our first result from this Venn diagram. So you can already see how useful it is. The only thing that slows us down is having to draw out the sample space like this. Let's fill in A. Now this region here is when we have um, only selected chocolate in the first round. So that's got to be here and here, but it can't be any of these possibilities. So it has to be chocolate, strawberry. So how many have we got here? We've got 4, 4 and 4 times these three possibilities in the first round. So we've got 4 times 3, 12. So that's when we only get chocolate. So the probability of A when we are selecting, when we, when we get a favourable outcome must be 12 add 6, which is 18 out of 42. Now 18 out of 42 is the same as 3 out of 7, and so that sounds right, okay? In fact, we can fill it in here. Probability of A is 3 out of our 7 initial biscuits, which, again, is represented now on our Venn diagram as 18 out of 42 possibilities. So good. Now, what about this region here? This is when we only get... Uh, a chocolate biscuit in the second event when we draw for the second time. So let's again look at our tree. We uh, didn't get chocolate in the first round, so it must be only these branches here. Um, but we did get it in the second round. So it must be uh, when we've got three C's here. It's a bit tricky to see because I need to just separate those out. But that should be one, two, three. Okay. And that happens... One, two, three, four times. So it's four times three. In other words, 
12 again. So we've got 12 here. Now we need to do a little calculation. Let's just check now that we've got all our numbers filled in in our Venn diagram that they do add up to 42. So 12 add 6 is what? 18. 18 add 12 uh, gives us 30. And now we add this region here. 30 add 12 gives us 42 and 42 was what we were expecting. So important to do that check. Make sure we've um, filled in all our figures correctly. Now we've already answered our question uh, even before we filled in our figures here but we can answer many other questions once we've got once we've got a Venn diagram like this. And let's see how we can do that. We're, go we're going to go up this arm here um, and so what we're looking at here is the probability of A. So if I just recolor this you can see that we're talking about this area here which we've said is 6 plus 12 18 out of the total number of possible outcomes 42 which is 3 out of 7. Now if we continue going up our arm here we'll have the probability of B conditional on A. In terms of our Venn diagram if we go back to our Venn diagram conditional on A or given A can mean only using these numbers here so 12 add 6. In other words, like this, if we say this is now not out of 42, but out of 18. Okay, 12 add 6, 18. Well, B given A has got to be just this number here. So it's where there's this overlap. This area is in B, but it's also out of a. So we've got 6 out of 18, which we can fill in here. And 6 out of 18 will simplify, if we divide top and bottom by 3, to 2 out of 6. Now why have I done that? Because this is what we'd expect. If we were just reasoning this out using logical reasoning, we would think, well, it must be a 3 out of 7, because there are 7 cookies possibility in uh, the first event. In the second event we've got one less so it's six and therefore it's going to be two out of six because we already drew a cookie in round A. So using the Venn diagram was just another way of calculating the same answer two out of six or a third is our probability of B given A. Okay what about our probability of not uh, not B given A. Okay, well not B has got to be, let's just highlight in green that region there first of all, there we go. Not B has got to be everything that's not in B and we've only got um, two numbers that are not in B. We've got 12 here and 12 outside of everything here. In other words, not B must be out of 24. So let's write that down here. And uh, not B, sorry, not, not B is the numerator. Okay. So everything is out of 42, of course. Sorry, it's not. It's out, I've got myself confused. It's very easy to get muddled. So it's out of 18 again, of course, because it's given A. And so again, if we're in here, given A, so sorry about that muddle, given A we've got 18 uh, and we've got not B, the number that's not in B in fact is just this one number here, so it's not this one here of course at all because it's given A, so it's 12 out of 18. There we go, that's better. Now if it's 12 out of 18 that again will simplify to, if we make it out of 6, we're dividing top and bottom by 3, so it's 4 out of 6, which again we would expect because 3 out of 7 here, but here it would be 4 out of 6 because we've already taken one of the cookies, and also would expect it because these must be complementary. In other words, this should be 1 minus this probability here 
uh, or you could say they add up to one and they do indeed two out of six <coughs> plus four out of six is six out of six equals one so what about this branch here the probability of not getting a uh, it has got to be everything other than this A region here. In other words, outside of the circle. And there are only two numbers again which are outside of the A circle. In fact, if I just highlight that whole region, you can see what we're talking about here. Everything other than A. So, what have we got? If we're talking about everything other than A, it must be 12 add 12 which is 24 out of 42 okay which again we can see will simplify down to well if we divide top and bottom by 6 we've got 4 out of 7 which we would expect because we had 3 out of 7 here the complement of 3 out of 7 is 1 minus 3 out of 7 equals 4 out of 7 4 out of 7 and 3 out of 7, 4 sevenths and 3 sevenths add up to 1. So finally, let's have a look at this arm here. This is the probability of B given not A. So given this yellow region here now, everything that's not in A, so 12 add 12, what's the region uh, of B? What do we have in B? Well, B must be this region here. Okay, so it's 12 out of 24. 12 out of 24. And 12 out of 24 simplifies, of course, we'll divide top and bottom by 4 this time, and we get 3 out of 6, which again is what we would expect. And finally, what if we think about not getting B? Well, if we don't get B, we've got this number here, and this number here, but it's given not A. So it must be just this number here, okay? Given not A. So we can't include uh, this one here, so I'm just going to erase that, because it's not in our not A region, which is this yellow region here. Um, and now we've got not B. So everything that's not B yet is in this yellow region here is the uh, 12 now out of 12 add 12, 24. Okay, so we get again 12 out of 24, which will be again 3 out of 6. So that's a, a quick run through of how conditional probability works. Let's now have a look at a couple of examples. Okay, so. Right, now what I'm going to do is choose some examples um, from problems that we've done before so that you can compare using the Venn diagram method or not using the Venn diagram method. So it gives you that kind of choice. So the example I've got here is the basketball team with Paul, Quentin, Ray, Saul and Philip. And we're going to look at the probability of picking either Paul or Philip in the second round. Okay, now, what, since we've already looked at the um, sample space, I'm just going to copy that from the previous example. And we had something like this, okay? Where in the first round, we've got PP, or we've got Q, R, and S. So that's five possibilities in the first round, and then four arms of course branch off from each of these because uh, we don't select uh, we've already selected one person so we've got one less in the second round selection okay so let's just write down what we're after we're looking for the probability of somebody whose first name begins with P in round two let's just write it like that okay so how do we do our Venn diagram well simply draw it out I'm not going to make make it too big this time let's just keep it nice and compact so that will do something like that and draw our classic two circle set of rings here again it doesn't need to be too neat 
just enough space to fill in all our numbers. In fact, I'm just going to make that one slightly smaller because uh, that's got just a little bit too large. Okay, so there we go. Something like that. There we go. So what I'm going to do is do a quick count, first of all, of the number of possibilities of not getting P ever. So we've got Q, R and S must be our options here. And we've got R and S there. And here we've got, so not getting P, Q and S. So we've got two every time. Not getting P here, R and Q. So we've got two times three gives us six. Okay. So fill in six in the region here where we never do pick a P. Now, let's have a look at when we get P both times. So we get a P, we get um, a P first time and then a P the second time. So there's one possibility here and there's another possibility here and there are no other possibilities. So there must be just two in the central region here. Now we've got to look at only, let's write in A and B, only A. So that's when we've got a P here, so just these two arms here, but we don't get a P in the second round, so that will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Similarly, if we only get a P in our second round selection, then it must be these three arms here, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's filled in our Venn diagram. Four numbers and then your Venn diagram is complete. The only final thing you might want to do is say, well, what's the size of the sample space, which is the total number of possibilities around the outside here. So we've got five arms here, four branches out of each arm. So it must be five times four, 20. And that gives us a little check. Have we added up these figures correctly? We've got two add six is eight, add 6 is 14, add another 6 gives us 20. So our Venn diagram should be correct. Now what I'm going to do is think about the probability of P in round 2. And if, it's a, if, if we're getting a P in round 2, that must be the same as the probability of B. So looking at our Venn, Venn diagram, the probability of B is... 2 add 6, in other words, 8 out of 20. Okay, so I've just, just about fit it in here, so I'll put it here. 8 out of 20. Okay, so that's our answer for the probability of getting P in the second round. Now, just a reminder of how we did it using a tree diagram, and then we can compare the results, or compare the two methods. With a tree diagram, we split the branches into getting a P or not getting a P, like this. So this is when we get a P, this is when we get a P, here is when we don't get a P, and here is when we don't get a P. This is when we don't get a P, then we do, and here is when we don't get a P, uh, and we don't get a P again. So filling in our probabilities, we had selected from five people, so it's got to be, there are two P's, so it's got to be two out of five. And then here it would be three out of five. But selecting a P in a second round is what we're interested in, so it would be this outcome and this outcome here. Okay, and then add those together. So here we've got to now have out of four, just a one possibility, so one out of four or one fourth, and here we st we didn't get a p, so it must be still out of four, but it must be two out of four. Okay, and we can fill in these other complements if we like, but we don't need to because we just need to add these these up now. So we multiply using the rule of multiplication, two fifths. So we're going along this pathway here now, times one fourth. And we're also adding this pathway here, three-fifths times two-fourths. Okay, and that 
will give us 2 times 1 is 2, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 3 times 2 is 6, 5 times 4 again is 20. In other words, our answer is exactly the same as using the Venn diagram, just using a different method. 2 plus 6, which is 8 twentieths. Okay. Now, my sock drawer example, where I've got uh, nine pairs of, pairs of socks, we've got three purple, three red, and three orange. And we've already done this in a previous video, so again, just have a look at the sample space here. We have this large number of outcomes here. We've got nine possible um, possibilities in the first drawer, in the first selection, I should say, from the drawer, and in the second selection, then uh, only eight because we've already drawn a sock. So it's seven. Uh, sorry, it's nine times eight, which is going to give me seventy-two. So when I draw my um, Venn diagram, the very first thing I'm going to think about, let's draw it down here, uh, is the outside count of the outside number of possibilities, which has given us 9 times 8, and so let's just write that in straight away, 9 times 8 equals 72, so I must equal 72. So that's the total sam sample space, all possible outcomes. Now if I fill in my, uh, my rings here, my circles overlapping again, okay, very simply sketched in just like that. Okay, label them A and B. And this time I think I'll fill in the central overlapping region here, which sometimes we call A intersect B, or just the possibilities of A and B. So if the probability here, let's just call this example 1 and example 2, this time we're looking for the probability of a matching pair of purple socks. Okay, so matching pair of purple socks. Well, we've got a matching pair of purple socks here and here, so that's one, two, here and here, so that's three, four, and here and here, so that's five, six, so we've got six in this central region here. Um, now, what, what if we don't ever, Paul, um, draw a, a pair of, uh, if we don't ever draw, I do apologise, if we don't ever draw um, a purple sock at all, so it's got to be here, 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 and here, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, possibilities of not drawing it in the first round. And then in the second round, we've got five. So it's five times six, it's going to give us 30. Okay. So that's when we never draw a purple sock. Now, what about here? When we only draw um, a purple sock in the first round, well, that's got to be here. And here we've got our, um, our, our occasions when we don't draw a purple sock. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's one, two, three times six, giving us 18 when we only draw it in the first round. And if we draw a purple sock in the second round, but not in the first, that's got to be these branches here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And we've got three each time there. So it's six times three again, so it's 18. So that's completed our Venn diagram. Now I'm only thinking about a matching pair of purple socks because if it's asking us about a matching pair of purple socks or um, red socks or a matching pair of orange socks, then the probabilities are going to be the same for each of those. So I simply add those together at the end. So considering just the purple socks to start with, well, if I'm drawing both a purple sock uh, in the first round and the second round, it must be this central region here. In other words, six, the intersect region. So we call this uh, A intersect B. Okay, that's the notation for that central area there. So we're dealing with that, so it's 6 out of the total sample space, which is 72, so it's 6 out of 72. So the probability of, let's say, PP, so two purple socks, 
equals 6 out of 72 and divide top and bottom by 12 and we get 1 out of 12 so it's 1 twelfth so let's compare that to using a probability tree diagram so again if we draw our branches like that to start with like that let's go down a little bit like that now this time all we need to do is consider the top branches if you like so this one here where we've got a purple sock first time and here where well, we've got a purple sock second time and the rest of it we could fill in but we don't need to because we're simply going along this arm here okay so purple sock in the first round well that must be we have nine in our sock drawer so it must be out of nine and there are three possibilities of picking a purple sock so it's three out of nine in the second round we've only got eight socks left so it must be out of eight and we've already taken a purple sock so there's only two left so it must be two out of eight so now we've completed uh, the only arm that we're going to follow down so using the multiplication rule we've got three ninths times two eighths we can simplify that to make our calculations easier that's going to give us three ninths is one third and two eighths is one fourth. Multiply it together and we get one twelfth. So our answer, just as our answer was correct here by doing a check using the probability tree, that one there, here it must also be correct again using the probability tree as a check. Okay, let's just have a quick final look at what we've been doing. Here we've got a Venn diagram compared to then a probability tree. And here, if I just draw in our multiplication idea here, we've been multiplying this probability of A by the probability of B conditional on A. And we know that the probability of A intersect B in other words, the probability of this region here, the, sorry, the ratio of this region here compared to the total sample space, which we're calling I, or you could call it even S. The ratio of this equals, so we can say equals the probability of A times the probability of B over A. Now this is a, turns out to be a really useful formula. We can just write it more simply as probability of A intersect B equals probability of A times probability of B given A. That formula is the basis of advanced probability theory and you can rearrange it if you want to calculate for example the probability of B given A that will be the probability of A intercept B divided by probability of A. So a useful formula derived from our comparison of these two approaches, the Venn diagram approach compared to the probability tree.